these are some interesting newspapers that came in the other day. Um, British military newspapers from the Second World War. Um, that is, newspapers which were printed in occupied countries for the benefit of the British forces. These are copies of the Tripoli Times, printed in North Africa in the Second World War. Quite rare survivors to find nowadays because I can find nothing at all on the internet about the Tripoli Times newspaper. I can find plenty about the Tripoli Post newspaper, which is a newspaper that's only been in existence since the year 1999, which is obviously no relation to the Tripoli Times. But the Tripoli Times was bandied about in about 1943 as North Africa's first English daily newspaper. Price, two lira. Um, early editions, um, they were never intended to last forever. Early editions were one sheet, like these are, and sometime they changed to two or three pages, like a proper newspaper. But they were never intended to be taken outside of North Africa, and any example of these are now pretty rare survivors, and you'll see by the conditions of some of these. This is an edition from March 1943, and as I fold it out, what strikes you is it's two-sided, but it's one page. It's all sun damaged around here. And the interesting thing about it is this side is printed entirely in English for the British forces. And if you turn it over to the back, exactly the same stories is repeated down to the print date, the price, but it's all in Italian on the back for the Italian forces and sometime in 1943 this all changed because when it went to a proper newspaper it was only printed in English but quite rare things to find nowadays pretty delicate falling to pieces so on this side we have forward the 8th army infantry success on main road to Tunis, shuttle bombing, Churchill thinks ahead, four year plan for Britain, Jap ships hit, Americans push on. And all of this again is repeated on the back in Italian. And then we have another one, which for some reason, this one isn't printed in English at all. It's printed, if I can get it open, entirely in Italian. And it's all about the Italian surrender, the armistice, against September 1943. So it's for the benefit of those Italian soldiers as part of the armistice. But it's all printed in Italian. And it's one piece, two sided. And then we have this other one about the Mareth line. And again, on this side, it's in English. This is March 1943. This side, the same details are in Italian. And that's another one about the armistice which we've just seen. And then, while 
those were being printed as one sheet two-sided these were also being printed triply times North Africa's first English daily price 2 lira September 1943 Italy quits unconditional surrender but the difference between those and these is that these are four sides a front middle and the back and it's all printed in English there's no Italian in it at all so we have Italy out unconditional surrender Germans vast losses to the Russians German death law in Denmark Britain's deputy prime minister and I kind of look into the future bearing in mind it's still only 1943 but there's a little bit here about post-war war memorials memorials to those who fall in this war will have a more useful purpose than those erected after the last war plans are already being considered in many towns and villages for the erection of civic centres, bathing pools, gymnasia youth centres, libraries, gardens or concert halls suggestions for memorials form an important part of the memorandum circulated to local authorities by the Central Institute of Art and Design from the National Gallery a federation of 40 national bodies dealing with craftsmanship art and design industry. The secretary says that the institute visualizes well-designed buildings with local tradition. Already 25 mun municipalities have expressed their agreement with the memorandum. The city of Birmingham has asked for additional copies for all councillors and subcommittees. Swansea too has shown deep interest. And on the back We have more goings on. Services boxing in Tripoli. And then we have an August 1943 edition. Hitler's health very bad compassionate leave warning the war office have warned relatives of servicemen and women against exploitation by persons or organizations professing to be in a position to obtain compassionate leave for those serving recommendations will only be considered from army welfare officers soldiers sales name and families association the society of social service or probation officers The Home Secretary has ordered the release from Winchester Prison of Ernest Bishop Wooten of Salisbury, a Jehovah Witness, who was sentenced on July 12th to three months imprisonment for failing to fire watch. The Board of Trade claims that the new utility ladies' rayon stockings, 731 and 765, now on the market, will not ladder, and that three or four pairs will last one year. Rescue workers protest. Watford branch of the British Legion has received the petition from 40 of the Rescue and Demolition Brigade of the Borough protesting at having to work under conscientious objectors who have been placed in charge of sections. And then we go out to the back and it's more news on Tripoli and in Africa. And then we have another one. This one is June 24th, 1943, The King's Visit, Souvenir Edition. Ford Motor Company gone on strike. Allied invasion must be soon. Talks with the Soviets. Then, oops. On the inside again, that's how delicate they are, they just literally just fall apart.
king with the 8th army the king at Malta returned to Tripoli the first deer US baseball stars in the forces the new helicopter a, U a new United States Army hel helicopter takes off vertically from in front of the United States Capitol in Washington in a demonstration marking the 25th anniversary of the first AML flight in the United States. The craft was developed by Igor Sikorsky, Russian-born American aircraft designer. Its chief advantage is that it can take off and land vertically at low speed, making it possible to operate in territory unsuitable for airplanes or land vehicles. Among its uses are carrying messages, stringing telephone lines, reconnaissance and rescue work. Helicopters are being used also by the US Navy for patrol work with convoys. Because of the craft's stability, news photographers are able to get under it for close-ups. And then we have the Tripoli Times. June the 19th, 1943. Naples raided again. And a little interesting snippet here. I wonder what happened to this. Flying boats with 200 passengers. A British firm is now building giant flying boats for the Air Ministry. It was announced today. These machines are intended for military transport work, but are capable of conversion to civilian work after the war. They can carry 23 tons of petrol for 4,000 miles or 200 passengers for a short journey, such as Britain to the Mediterranean. Then we have a proclamation number 32 issued in Tripolitania. Article 1 between 1200 hours and 1930 hours on the 19th day of June 1943, all civilians living or being within a distance of 2 kilometres on either side of the main road leading from Castel Benito to Benito Gate, and all civilians throughout the entire municipal area of the city of Tripoli shall remain indoors. They shall not be upon balconies, rooftops, or anywhere out of doors, etc. etc. That's because the king's visit. And they didn't want the possibility of him being shot, I suppose. Americans destroyed Japanese air armada. German spy prepared Pearl Harbor attack. Nothing happened on the U-boat U-boat front. A little bit of an uproar over the Colonel Blimp film. Orson Welles rejected for the army. Orson Welles, actor, director, producer, was rejected for military service when he reported for induction on his 28th birthday after ignoring the six month draft determined, deferment. Approved for limited service on the 1st of March after an examination showed he was suffering from back injuries, bronchial asthma, and arthritis. Wells was told this report for induction. However, he was reclassified on May the 3rd as a worker in an essential industry. Wells ignored deferment classification, reported for induction and was rejected. And then we have the Tripoli Times. The 4th of August, 1943. Allies take key towns in 10 mile advance. We get new ships. Appeal to Indians, Hamburg, ninth day of bombing, landed in Turkey, Berlin evacuates, British prisoners of war shot in Germany, Rommel still moving, Field Marshal Erwin Rommel is now in Yugoslavia. Then we have a, an article about German motor roads. These are the German uh, motorways. How they may carry, carry the Allied armies into Berlin. Where is Mussolini? Pilot shot down in Sicily captured 35 prisoners. An American fighter pilot who was forced to parachute from his disabled Warhawk had the unique experience of being rescued by Sicilian fishermen and later of accepting the voluntary surrender of 35 Italian officers and men. The pilot, Lieutenant John F. Roth of York, Nebraska, described his episode. SS troops revolt. Then we 
we have more sport happening on the back page pigeon racing horse racing China takes a railway Ploesti raid casualties Spanish arms work explosion an explosion at the Spanish sporting arms and ammunition factory at Alicante caused several hundred casualties and considerable damage to property including the city hall Russians keep up advance you have radio cinema so that's a not often come across British forces newspaper called the Tripoli Times produced for circulation in North Africa and it's something you certainly don't see in the UK and there ain't much on the internet about it particularly these double-sided uh, one-page things which are in British and Italian so it's not something you're seldom going to come across and you've seen the condition of these and all of these survived because the serviceman who got them when he was out there was clever enough to actually bring them back with him so that's the only reason these things have survived until 2017 and they are a pretty rare thing to find nowadays